is still carbureted. We'll take you down that road for a test drive. Make sure there ain't no crazy noises or anything that I hear. That way when I get done with the fuel injection, if there's something else wrong with it, that way I know I didn't do it. Just a little bit of insurance for me and the customer. Pretty sure this is just a 350. It's got Edelbrock heads, the aluminum heads, the E Street, um, Edelbrock RPM air gap intake. They went all Edelbrock on this thing. Fight the flu with Santa Fe flu vaccines, which help prevent flu in older adults. They've even been shown to provide better protection from flu related complications compared to standard dose flu shots. Don't get flu zone high dose water valent if you've had a severe allergic reaction to its components, including egg products, or after previous dose of flu vaccine. Don't get flu block quadrivalent if you've had a severe allergic reaction to its components. Tell your healthcare professional if you've had severe muscle weakness after a flu shot. People with weakened immune systems may have a lower vaccine response. This flu season, you do have a choice. Choose the protection of a Sanofi flu vaccine. Ask your pharmacist or doctor which Sanofi flu vaccine is right for you. There's used, there's certified, and then there's BMW certified. With a rigorous inspection by BMW trained technicians, 100% genuine BMW parts, an additional one year unlimited mileage warranty, and a BMW certified dealer network you can count on. You will truly feel BMW certified difference. You know, the kickdown cable is an automatic transmission. Exceptional offers available to BMW. Get that out of the way. Sierra Subaru of Monrovia is your community dealership. Our Subaru family is always here to lend a helping hand. We know family comes in all shapes and sizes. We have four legs. Subaru loves pets. And we're always happy to welcome them to our dealership. And make sure they feel right at home too. Since 2008, Subaru has donated over $28 million to the ASPCA to help support the rescue, transport, and adoption of over 230,000 animals across the country. Bring the whole family. CV. Visit us today at Sierra Subaru of Monrovia. Hey, you, it's Nikki Glazer. I'm Ian and also a um, Hey Yolanda, or Alum. Can you 
Sometimes you put your carburetor in. You get right there with a socket, and sometimes you can't. That's the way it goes. It's like John Bianco there with Sark, right? And the most bold day, Utah and UCLA. You know, the last time Utah star cornerback Clark Phillips walked into the Rose Bowl. He was a Pac 12 champion. He was playing Ohio State, a team he'd spent a lot of time committed to in high school and played in front of a lot of family and friends. Would have been a dream come true if not for the nightmarish evisceration of the Utah pass D by CJ Stroud and company. Now, another offensive challenge awaits. Maybe not quite a Buckeye level offense from UCLA, but one fully capable of ruining Phillips' homecoming. To pick six, Clark Phillips. Very good defense as we'll face on here. We create a lot of turnovers between that first line and how well they play defensively. They really understand what's going on. They run to the ball, all 11 guys. They have really talented defensive backs. Really smart football players when it comes to football teams. Dorian Thompson Robinson loaded. Slings it down. Touchdown! 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 He's a true dual threat. He poses a lot of problems to the defenses and we're planning accordingly so that we can stop him. DTR has upped his game in virtually every area. He's uh, making great decisions. He's taking care of his football. He's extending the place for him. That's really a good thing. He's like his most dangerous. Time for Old Dominion Best in the Game, brought to you by Old Dominion Freight Line. And this is a classic struggle. I mean, the high-powered offense of the Bruins, not that Utah's offense is as potent it is, but they're built around this defense, holding teams to fewer than 15 points per game. So with DTR, Chip Kelly, the outfield. All right. Well, I have the MSD fuel injection, or throttle body injection, what they call it, mounted down. I've got my main harness for this um, plugged in here. I say main harness. This is the one that you have to wire to everything that you have. So it's wired. It goes around the distributor. Tees off of the harness here. Runs into the negative side of the distributor for the tack. So it reads RPM from that. And I've got it, it runs on through, through here, on to the AC compressor, where it reads a 12 volt kick on, so it can't idle up while the AC is, compressor is on. Um, all this wire is already here, this is my wire in here, um, to there, I'll wire it in here. Run it back, so now I've got to, to install the coolant temp sensor, this wire goes into that. And then all I have left is mounting the module, the power module. I was thinking about going here with it, but I won't be able to get a drill to it. So I think it's going to end up over here, kind of hitting away a little bit. Um, they do recommend that it's not in a closed space like the glove box, which would be back behind here. And, you know, I would like to mount it up here but it's not a level surface to mount it to. Um, you know, and I might still change my mind. Maybe, you know, if I can make something like that right there work, possibly. But um, I'm kind of leaning towards over here um, because MSD, actually, you can, you can leave this part unplugged to where you just have this on after you set it up. 
Because during setup, you have to have the handheld device plugged in. It plugs in to that other hole there. So once you get it set up, you can unplug this. You don't have to run this. If you do run this, which you can, it'll read, it'll show you live data, you know, coolant, temp, RPM, first one thing, another. It will show you that. So you can, you have the option to run it either way. The bad thing is, there's no, it doesn't come with a mount for this. So this will just kind of be laying out unless you made somewhere for it to sit. So kind of trying to find a spot that I can have it to where the customer can have it inside of the cab. They do make extension pieces for this. It doesn't come with a kit. So, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Actually, that actually looks like it does come with a kit. So that's what that is. So yeah. So we will see where it ends up going. But with that being the case, you never know. I can probably put it anywhere. Um, so after I get that, the main power module mounted, I will, route a spot and find a spot for the wideband o2 sensor and then i will have to find a spot and then i'll have to figure out whether i still haven't decided whether we're going to do it returnless on the fuel system or we are going to put a return in it um, if you put a return you have to have a regulator for the return this customer has a regulator here i have to still do a little bit of reading on that but um we're going to go figure that out after we get all this done and the power module mounted and everything like that then we're going to pick up on the fuel system and the o2 sensor so then we'll go from there but that's where i'm at right now and next time you see it all this will be done the power module will be mounted all the wiring will be done and then we will go with the fuel system and tackle that so there we go all right so here's what i got for today i'm actually uh, gonna call it quits for the day Go home, eat some dinner with the wife, and um, relax a little bit, watch some football. But anyways, I got the power module mounted back in there. Um, got the main wiring harness for it. It comes out. Um, the wideband O2 sensor is going is going to you know, go down to the exhaust, um, and then I have got the fuel pump hot wire right here. It's going to go down, run down with that one um, on the outside of the frame rail get them out of the far away as I can from the exhaust manifold or headers um, my remote switch wire that's going to be with ignition 12 volt ignition wire it runs here up against the firewall and it'll go in where this red wire is this used to be the hot for the um, electric choke so I'll cut this and pull that wire through the firewall with that um, and then I have got the power, let's see if I can get it down here. The power and ground is in this. And then also the power, or it's actually a ground switch wire for the electric fans. Um, it runs along with, with this up through here and it will tuck right in there. Um, the ground, the fan ground switch, I don't know where, if I'm gonna actually run it around this way around here over to the fan or what because right now it's kind of like this and it actually has a fan controller with a temperature sensor in the radiator so i'm gonna have to see what they've got going on with that and how it's wired and then rewire it all because the msd will actually control the fan without that controller but it does need a relay so that's that i've got the AC compressor wired. I, I wired it to where you can unplug it if you need to take the AC compressor off. Um, that way you don't have to cut the wire, obviously. So I've got that going that way. Um, pretty much. I might redo a little bit of this. I'll find a better spot for it. But as far as that goes, um, tomorrow all I've got to do to finish this up is I got to get a fitting for my PCV. Uh, PCV hose which is this it does not come with that in case you're wondering it does not come with a, um, a port for the vacuum advance either so you have to get a barbed fitting that screws into that so I got to find a barbed fitting for the PCV hose and 
weld in my O2 sensor and then figure out whether I'm going to do the returnless or returned fuel system. I'm still up in there about that. So, uh, but yep, that's where I'm at. And I will be back with y'all tomorrow.